Good morning, and thank you very much. It is a real pleasure to be with you this morning. It was a long journey, but it was a pleasant one. So I, I received a phone call um, to share this project, and um, it is my pleasure to do so. So let me tell you about the Corne d'Abondance. We are um, a, a community organization with social services, and every year we are accredited by the ministry, um, and we have to report back to the ministry about what we have achieved. So our objectives are to promote within a specific population, especially the younger ones between age 5 and 17, healthy food and healthy um, habits through specific programs. So we provide workshop, theoretical workshops, cooking workshops to raise awareness, awareness about health and the health, uh, especially um, in the younger ones. We, had, we launched a program called Young Cooks. It is a very young program as well for us. It was launched in 2007. We had uh, sponsors, cooks, who came in to uh, cook for the younger ones, um, younger ones between 8 and 12, especially lower class uh, uh, people. And uh, we felt we, we needed to support uh, the kids. Uh, they said we have no we don't have this culture, so we created this Young Cooks uh, workshop series, which was launched in 2007, again for children between age 8 and 12. In 2008, between 2008 and 2012, we had some practical workshops on the consumption of fruits and vegetables and developed the uh, <clears throat> lunch, uh, the health lunch, bro lunch box. What we have found over the three years of experience is that uh, children and their parents have little knowledge when it comes to food or uh, cooking. A little bit like in France, parents lack time to cook. Several families eat uh, frozen food. A few parents only cook with their children at the end of the week. Little time is available to transfer knowledge between generations. And of course, the question of supply, food supply, seems to be a, a crucial issue. It is very difficult to make right choices. Uh, it is true. We've heard this in uh, previous uh, presentations. Choices are difficult to make. There is so much information. There is too much information, which kills information. And then what food professionals understand is that uh, uh, giving to food banks is important. Uh, however, they know today that supermarkets can also make profits with uh, those surpluses. <clears throat> but a lot of the food is, is fat food, so we felt we had a lot of work to do. So working with young people uh, seems to be uh, an obvious need. How? Well, providing educational programs about healthy food by also allowing for the proper transmission between children, the family, and <clears throat> the relatives. So the school really plays a, a crucial role in the community for healthy future generations. The purpose of the young leaders, young health leaders, age 5 to 12, the main purpose of this program is to have, is to focus on education. Education on what to eat with a focus, of course, on fruits and vegetables. <clears throat> so there are several steps. The first step was to find uh, financial partners to set up the project. This was in September 2010. So we set up um, a management committee. <clears throat> in the management committee we have representatives of the organizations. We have representatives of the school as well, as well as uh, parents, nutritionists, as well as corporate financial partners to ensure proper management of the project. The uh, Louis Bonduel Foundation uh, was invited. We, project, we presented the project. Um, we 
again with a focus on educating uh, young children on the consumption of fruits and vegetables. So the vision of the program is to encourage a generation of healthy children. This is our primary focus. So the program, the, the, the purpose uh, or the objective of the young leaders is to again develop a network of young leaders with several objectives. First of all, to get them to learn um, a culture of healthy food at a very young age. Get them to discover fruits and vegetables. And if you don't like it, well, you can learn how to like it. Contribute to reduce obesity in children and contribute to reduce type 2 diabetes, which is very prevalent in our country. The resources, we have a nutritionist who is supported by a, a diet technician. The budget, $65,394 Canadian dollars, with a breakdown here on human resources, food, learning material, and management fees. We have a, a transfer process, a, a competence transfer process, and their impact. The school playing a very important role, the young leaders, the impact on the young leaders, then the family, then the community. And again, ultimately what we want is to build a generation of healthy children. Each child attends two workshops. So two workshops every single year, for six years. Again, it's all based on the pleasure of discovering. Then we have practical workshops during which, which kids can prepare a recipe, they discover the ingredients they're used, that is fruits and vegetables, and then taste the food they have cooked. This is how you learn how to like. As I said, two theoretical workshops per year per child to develop uh, nutritional and food knowledge. Again, this is about knowing each workshop is specifically adapted to the level of each child. At the end of the school year, children receive a little binder which they have to provide to their parents. It contains a Canadian food guide. It is provided f for free, of course. Uh, a resource guide on healthy food. With This is a 40-page guide, which is very interesting, which we have developed at the Corne d'Abondance to uh, provide help and support to parents on, on, on how to read labels and so on. There is um, information as well on the health lunch boxes uh, as well. In order to measure the learning and collaboration with schools, children are tracked from kindergarten all the way to the sixth year. We have 410 kids aged 5 to 12 that have participated to 45 workshops, um, practical workshops and 45 theoretical workshops and three new primary schools have registered for 2011-2012. Uh, this is the territory we cover with a total of roughly 60,000 citizens, 4,030 children. Fifteen point three are a uh, low income, which is quite significant. So in Quebec, poor eating habits start early. Some of the latest figures we received from the Quebec uh, Office of Statistics show that uh, fast food is still fast foods are still doing very well. <coughs> 11% of the 4 to 8, 16 of the 9 to 13, and 28% of the 14 to 18 year old had been in a fast food the day before the survey. During an, during an average day, 14% of children age 18 or less skipped a meal. And this goes up to 20%, which is one out of every five for the 9 to 18 age group. We are also seeing an increase of snacks. The majority of kids, anywhere between 54 and 73%, depending on the age group, has at least three snacks every day. 
which includes a lot of fat and sugar. We're seeing an increase in the prevalence of uh, overweight or obesity in children age 15 or more. 35.6% of the children in that age 15 or more have, are overweight. 17% are uh, obese. Our this is our dream, the cooking bus. We'd like, to have a, we'd like to have a cooking bus like this one. It can accommodate a class of 20. So instead of spending a lot of money on teaching, well, you could use a cooking bus like this. And as a matter of fact, save money and make it more attractive for young children to eat healthy food and cook. We would like to thank the Louis Bonduel Foundation in the name of the Corps d'Abondance and its Board of Administration. Thank you, Michel Martel, for this uh, presentation, which I think gives a very good overview of what you're doing. And indeed, uh, we would love to uh, support your dream, the cooking bus dream. You insisted on the importance of learning, theory, combining theory, theory and practice. Do you think that this is what could change the way uh, kids do things. Well, yes, we do believe in theory, but uh, more so in practice. Theory is, of course, practice uh, is, is important, but practice is even more important. You know that the young cooks, uh, children between age 7 and 10, when they bake their own bread, when they cook, they're very attentive, uh, they're very involved. But, but the problem is the lack of education, oftentimes with parents. And what is, you insisted on the, on the transmission of, the transfer of knowledge between, not between the parents and the children, but between the children back to the parents. So in a sense, it's like rewinding and going one generation back to teach the parents how to eat a healthy food. And you could even go further. I'm originally from the countryside, uh, and I remember eating a, a lot of interesting types of food. And, and very quickly, the next, the generation after, uh, after started with a microwave oven, and uh, which led to frozen food, ready-to-eat food. So I think we we have a lot to redo, um, a lot of mistakes to to address, to make sure that the transmission of knowledge. Is done in a better way, and that is exactly the purpose for healthy children. Thank you very much, my pleasure, and thank you to the foundation.